Zechariah chapter 7. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius. Now this is not the Darius of Daniel chapter 5 that overpowers Belshazzar. Because that King Darius dies two years after that. And being the fourth year, he didn't come back as a ghost. This Darius is after Israel is given permission to go back to Judah to build a temple and to settle in the land. That the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah the fourth day of the ninth month, even Chislo. Later on, the second calendar of the Jews, the months were, were, were renamed during the exile Chislo. And notice too, it says the fourth day. Nowhere in the Bible, in the scriptures, does it list the days for the Hebrews Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The naming of the days goes all the way back to Genesis 1. In the beginning of the morning, we're the first day. In the beginning of the day, was the second day. In the beginning of the, was the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day. That's how the Hebrews. When you say that Jesus Christ rose on Sunday, it's the Lord's day, that's the Roman Catholic calendar. Come up by Pope Gregory. Jesus rose on a Sunday. No, he didn't. Even in, in the Gospels and even in the books of Acts, even Paul tells it, it was the first day of the week. It was not Sunday. The Catholics will worship sun, not Christians. But the church doesn't know any better today. When they had sent into the house of God, Shariser and Regamelech and their men to pray before the Lord and to speak to the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts and to the prophets saying, now here's a question. Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years? And what the Jews had, according to the law and, and according to their own uh, traditions and festivals and rites, is each month, particular month, there was a celebration to God. Even you find this in Paul when, when uh, there's a specific time, a specific period when the Jews fasted. <clears throat> this has been carried over. So what their question is, in the fifth month, should I be weeping? We've been doing it all these years. We settled back in the land. And what are we supposed to do? Because we went into captivity. Then came the word of the Lord, Lord of hosts unto me, hosts being everything, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, Israel, Judah, and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, so the fifth and seventh month where it was the month put forth for fasting and mourning, even those 70 years that they were in captivity in Babylon, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? Alright, so you fasted. And you mourned. And God said, did you do it for me? And when you did eat, your fast was over. When you did drink, your fast is over. Did you not eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Okay, so you had a period of time. You had two months of 12. And you dedicated fasting and mourning to God. But you had 10 months. You just, and it looks like to a fact is, you know what? When they ate, when they ate and when they drank, they didn't thank God. They didn't take the message, the message of the Lord, giving them food. 
So in other words, if you were to apply that to the Christian age today, is a Christian would go into a, into a restaurant, and Lord forbid would they at that table bow their head and openly pray for their meal, but which we have done, we do as a family. And we have done that, we have Christians come up to, you know, we never thought of doing that. We just never thought to do that in a rest. Uh, I want to thank you and your family for showing it. Well, you know, hey, you know, we, we go to church on Sunday. We're in church on Sunday. Well, what about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? You see, some people, they're only Christians on Sunday. And Monday through Saturday, they live like hell. They live with the devil in the world and... And what God, what God has told us, and listen, you know, okay, you got this fast because you've been in trouble. You're not in your homeland for 70 years. But then there was times that you ate and drank and you didn't think of me. And in the law, it prescribes a time of thanksgiving and a time of remembrance. There, there's a, there's in the law, it say, you know what, when you get in the land and, and you're fat and, and, and you're living scrumptiously and you are over blessed, don't forget me. Which they did. So does the church. So ye not hear the words which the Lord had cried by the former prophets, had been Isaiah, Jeremiah. When Jerusalem was inhabited, this is before Babylon came, this would be Jeremiah. And these would be the prophets with Jeremiah, saying, you know, you gotta repent, you gotta get right, but they didn't listen. They were fasting, but they weren't obeying. They were doing the Passover, but they weren't obeying. You can do the ritual and not serve God. You can go to church on Sunday. And I know plenty of people go to church on Sunday, and their life and their conduct is nothing to behold in heaven. It's become a ritual. You can take children under seven years old. Oh, they go to church. Yeah, they're dragged by their parents. They would rather be somewhere else. And the cities that run about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain, that's before the captivity. So, and I, I was in a church one time, and the pastor goes, well, we're going to fast this week or whatever, something like that, and you know, it became bragging. We're going to fast for a week, and on Friday we're going to go out to this restaurant, we're going to, well, wait, that's not fasting a week. And then, you know, I, I go to my grandma's house, you know, we're fasting this week. No, you're not, because Thursday or Friday you're going to go to the restaurant. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's not a week. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's not a week. You're lying. Oh, we fasted to the Lord, but you live like hell. And that's what the church is today. Oh, we do Christian activities, but you're not Christian. And even Jesus warns us about this fasting when he's me. He says, listen, if you're going to fast, don't walk around moping around, oh, woe is me, I haven't had anything to eat in one hour, oh, 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 look at me, I'm fasting to God, I'm unhappy. And he's like, he's anoint your face, put a smile on your face, and even though your tummy is angry at you, go out there and say, I'm having a good day. Don't show it. Don't blow the trumpet, hey, look what I'm doing. There are Christians, there are churches, there are pastors. They, they, they magnify what they do and, and in heaven's like, I don't care. You're not doing it for me. There are people, okay, yeah, they put money in a plate. They do it because they then they can go claim it on the IRS, which I believe, and people hate me for this, is, all right, you claim it in the IRS, God ain't going to give you the credit in heaven. 
And the word of the Lord came to Zechariah saying, moving on, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, that's everything. Saying, execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion to every man to his brother. Now, run to Romans chapter 13 and look at this word, execute. When it comes to the Christian obeying the powers that be. Now, I'm sad that you pray for the family, but a school teacher was out jogging the other day, and she was adopted. And they, they just found her body, and that's all I'm going to say about it. And, and they caught the guy, and they're, they're going to charge him with murder. Well, I wrote on Facebook today, I don't care about that. Because you know what they're going to do is, he's going to go through the trials, and he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail. The Bible says a, a convicted murderer is to be put to death. The blood cries out. That woman's blood is going to cry out to God continually until that man is executed. And he said, execute judgment. We're to follow Romans 13 as Christians, that every soul be subject to higher powers. That's President Biden. As much as President Trump, President Clinton, President Obama, President Bush, President Reagan, President Carter, and whoever the next presidents are. That's your mayor. That's your governor. That's your boss. That's your pastor. You can't fire the father. You can't honor those higher powers. You think there's somebody who can do it better? You have the power in America to give and lose the roots. For there is no power but of God. Oh, and President Biden, he's not my president. All right, you're going to tell that to God one day. Because whether you like it or not, and even if it's by Satan's getting God's authority, now I don't know, I'm not even going to profess to know. God still, okay, say, go ahead, put him in office if that's the case. But whatever the case is, God put that man in office. The powers that be are ordained. You ordain a minister of God. You have a big show of ordaining somebody to the ministry. We have a big show of ordaining a president in January. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. So that ordinance goes back to ordaining those in charge of the law. They that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. If you're a Christian, that's not going to hell. If you go around and say, he's not my president, and you're ranking on him, don't you dare think you're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ and you're going to hear, well done. Don't you dare think you're going to get a crown or reward. You're going to walk away with ashes. That's not being taught in your Baptist church today. For the rulers are not terror to good works. I mean, if you're going to do good, you don't need to worry. Paul's writing this on the Nero, but to evil. In America, we got to the fact is the criminal did not need to worry about he's the one with all the rights. And if he gets caught, Oh, man, he's going to get a hotel uh, correction, clothing, air conditioning, and basketball court. He's going to get television. Gonna, listen, I've been in prison ministry. I know what they get. And they had the nerve one Thanksgiving. Come, I came in, and uh, uh, they actually allowed me to go in on Thanksgiving night. It was Thursday night. was the night that we would go in there. They allowed me to go in and go, oh, no, we got peanut butter sandwiches. That's what we got. I said, listen. I said, I ain't getting no turkey or anything like that. Well, they didn't say, well, I didn't tell her I didn't like turkey. <laughs> but it gives you the right to think you get more. You're not afraid of doing wrong. Will thou not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God, the powers. But if you do that which is evil, you break the law, be afraid. That's not America. For he beareth not the sword. 
in vain execution to what? For he is a minister of God to avenger, to execute, there it is, wrath upon him that doeth evil. And even the New Testament, if you're a murderer, you put to death. That's to execute judgment, rightly. Now, the judgment in America today is not right. Execute true judgment, chapter 7, verse 9. That O.J. Simpson trial made a mockery of what our court, court that the fact is, here this guy is a, is a movie star, and here is a football star, and he walked away from, from justice. You know, the thing is, and I heard somebody quote, the, you know, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. You better make sure you try to put that glove on better. If that judge allowed OJ to hold his hands out so it would not fit, he needs to be removed from the bench. And it, these people, they're, they're movie stars and they're singers or they're, they're whatever they are and they come off from the justice system guilty and they come off because, you know, they're well known, they're famous and all that. No, they ought to get greater judgment because they are a person of public authority. If I had my way, you had a sports star and, and he's involved in any crime and goes before a court and two or three times he's been by our court and he's found guilty. All your sports cards, all your posts, everything involved that guy and that sport is, is wiped off. It has no value of anything, no more, like Pete Rose in the gambling. Execute true judgment. So evidently what God is saying, there's judgment going on that's not true. Well, he's a priest. He gets special privileges. What Pilate did with Jesus Christ and Barabbas was not executed true judgment. The wrong guy walked away that afternoon. The wrong guy went to the cross that afternoon. Now listen, I know what the scriptures say. And today we know they oh we're a Christian nation. No, we're not. We may have been started on the Bible, the Geneva Bible of the Mayflower, but our constitution government it was built upon Masons. Where Washington DC is a Mason fairgrounds of everything Mason related. You cannot turn your eyes and not see it and look at the street maps of Washington, D.C. They're all laid out to the Masonic Lodge. And there has been judgment in this nation that has been wrong. And don't worry. God will correct the judgment at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white from judge. You ever want ever want a question if you ever go into a prison ministry or go into a prison? You ask this one simple question. I've done it many times. Who in this room is not guilty? And you watch every single hand will pop up. Well, you would think there's a whole realm. And show mercy. And compassion to every man, to his brother. Don't you just show mercy and compassion because of what their status, of what their fame. They should get more of a judgment. They should be set forth as an example. And oppress not the widows. So everything they've been doing it, and this is in the law. Uh, she's a widow woman. What what can she do to us? And the widow was suppressed, and the widow was oppressed, and she would have her land taken away. She would be overly taxed. And what could she do? She had no no husband. Made her children young. Made her children up and grown. And she had no say.
You ever ask yourself why is the question in the Old Testament that the whores and the harlots were known by the government? The king walks into Jericho in the room of the, the harlot and he doesn't arrest any of them and knows she's a harlot. Even uh, Judah, he finds out his daughter-in-law, she's pregnant, she's a widow, burn her. Oh, wait a minute, that's my neck, that's my bracelet, that's my set. And all of a sudden, the capital crime that she was involved in, he was also should have been put to death too. Think about that. They have one of those twins is, is the line of Jesus Christ. Nor the fatherless. The children of the widow had no say. I grew up in America as a boy with the, with the object of saying any boy in America could grow up to be a president of the United States. I don't know when it happened, but now it's like, you know, you got to be a lawyer, you got to be a multi-billion, quadrillion dollar heir to, to buy everybody's vote. Your common plumber, electrician, cannot make his way all the way to the White House. I'd love to see a, a, a man who, who lost one of his parents, sadly, to death. Struggle in life and, and, and get into a business and raise his own family and he has the trials and troubles and tribulations and, and, and he's got to pay his bills and his children give him a hard time and medical needs and, and he works his way up to the White House and sits in the Oval Office and he can make decisions on, you know what, I know, listen, the President of the United States wouldn't even know what, the, what happens when he pulls the lever on the toilet. Don't even think he would. I don't even think they would probably even have a plunger in the President's staff. He would call somebody in. The stranger. That's the Gentile. And you would even look at yourself, look at Jonah and Peter. Their prejudice. And when the time of Jesus comes, there's such a prejudice against the half free Jews, the Samaritans. There's a man laying inside the street, a priest, a Levite. I ain't going to take care of him. He's going to soil me. Nor the poor. Don't get up there with a the Democrat. Oh, we're helping the poor. We're helping the poor. And, and you see these, you know, basketball player over here in the food kitchen. No, that's just, uh, that's a frame picture shot. And may not even be at a soup kitchen just to make him look well. Well, such a high celebrity is giving money to this organization. Yeah, and that's why the, the, the president does not want to show his tax form on how much he puts up all his offerings and givings to the government. Let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Now Jesus would go even farther to say, who started looking upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has committed adultery with her. Well, I didn't do no harm or wickedness to him. Yeah, but you were thinking about it. And that's another thing today is not talked about among Christianity. You are guilty by thinking about it. You don't necessarily have to do it. And if I had the opportunity, I'd kill that guy. Oh, you, you better be careful. Ooh, you wait that one day, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you good. What you did to me. Uh, 
You gotta start repenting. Because that's in your heart. That's a seed of envy and, and wickedness. That's a hard field to plow. But they refuse to hearken. This is the preaching of Jeremiah. This is the preaching of Isaiah. They would not listen. Where did they end up for 70 years? In Babylon. What's the church today? They're not listening. I think the rapture is really I don't think the rapture is oh I just want them to come home and be with us. No, 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 no. Because God's not willing that any should perish. If God had this idea, we would the church would be here forever and every lost man before he dies we would be out there preaching the gospel, not abortion, giving everybody the opportunity to hear the gospel. No, I think the rapture is. It'd be like when I grew up, and there's an illustration coming up, when I grew up in, in New London, man, when my, when my mother cried out, Stanley William Hayward, get home right now! I was in trouble, and I tell you, I took the long way in the short, in the short walk. I got in trouble for not even being there on time. I think when the rapture happened, and he calls our name, Sally William Hayward, get up here right now. What was your conduct? And may he's passing. What on earth were you teaching your people? You are acting like that to the world, being like the world. I think God at the rapture is going to even hard to shifting who is his and who is the devil. You know, it, it's like, it's not a true story, but it's like, the, you know, there, there was this bar fight. And there was broken bottles, there were, gu there were guns firing off, and knives being thrown, and people were dying, injured on the floor. And in the little bit of aftermath, there's, there, there's Michael, and there is, there's Satan. And Michael grabs the hand of a woman's body, and they like, what are you doing? I'm taking this home to the glory. Like, no, that's mine. And Satan grabs her hand and goes, oh, him and Satan. I rebuke you in the name of the Father, but you better look at that soul that's in your hands right now. And the devil looks at that soul and he sees she's saying, he goes, oh, damn. What's she doing in my crowd? And pulled away the shoulder. And if you've ever seen this in a story, and, and, and if you've been a child growing up with your parents, there's been that time that, that your mom wants you to do something, and she puts your, her hand on your shoulder, and you're like, yeah, huh? I don't want to. Oh, boy, I've done that many times. I've seen it many times in the story. You see that thing, you know, he wants that toy, and the mom, no, no, no. And he, he, she puts that hand on that shoulder, to drag him to the next aisle, you know. I ain't moving. I'm staying right here. I'm going to look at that toy. I'm going to look at that cookie. Whatever it is. I ain't going with you. That's exactly what Israel was. I mean, Judah, when we studied Jeremiah. Jeremiah's time to get right. Well, you know, we keep on celebrating worshiping the Queen of Heaven. And they stopped their ears. They stood. Listen, that's why we studied Jeremiah. That's why we study all the books. This is what happened in Jeremiah. God told Jeremiah, say this. Jeremiah said this, Judah refused to hear. That's the church age. I've, I used to write on Facebook. I see people out there, they got pictures of, of babies in the womb and abortion is murder. It is a murder. But that's not what we're to preach on the streets. We're to preach the gospel. And they got, you know, signs that say homosexuality is a sin and homos are sin. Yeah, they are, but that's not what we're to preach on the street. We are to preach about the death, burial, and resurrection of heaven and hell through Jesus. Abortion has never been a public thing to be preaching. It ought to be in a pastor's office with a congregation saying, you know, I, I, I'm praying and I'm thinking about abortion. It's not to be open. He 
You see, the devil's got the church distracted. Jesus, God said, like God said to Jeremiah, Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Oh, we go running over to Matthew. Matthew is not the church commission. Matthew's written to Jews. Our commission, which is removed, most of Mark chapter 16 is removed out of your modern Bible. Think about that. Jesus said to them, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Many of your modern Bibles, that is removed. Well, what do they preach? Come to church. We got a movie night at church. We got a good movie. We got a good preacher coming. We're going to have a fellowship dinner. Why don't you come to the fellowship dinner and have a good time with us? We'll play Jesus. It's like bingo, but we just do it in the name of Jesus. You come Sunday morning, we have fellowship afterwards, no church service after Sunday night. Heck, some people don't even come to church Sunday morning, they come in after when church is served. And stop their ears that they should not hear. That's many Christians say in the churches they go to. That's your mega churches. That's your Southern Baptist churches. I know, I've been in one. They don't want to hear the, you know, I, they're involved in modern Bibles, and I went in there and tried to give them the truth about the King James Bible and the modern Bible, and their pastor told me, I use that word lightly, pastor, so what are you trying to give them that garbage for? No, you're the Ichabod. No way, I don't. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. They're hard. They're not going to listen. They're not going to be broken. Even if you had dynamite. Some Catholics are like that. Don't you tell me I'm Catholic. And I preach in the streets. They come in there. Rah, 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 rah. Are you Catholic? Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, I could tell. My mama went to the church. My daddy went to church. My grandparents were in that church. You're not going to take me. I'm going to just that church, 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 church. But the Bible, I don't care what the Bible says. I had one guy one time, I've never sinned. I, I went to the scripture, told he's going to sin. Ah, Adam and Stone. I had one guy come to me and goes, you know, I'm an atheist. I sat down and said, listen, do you know what an atheist is? And we talked for hours. And by the end of that conversation, I said, sir, can I tell you something? Here's what I said, do you, uh, do you really believe right now that you are an atheist? Our, our conversation is, no. He goes, I'm really not sure. I said, well, congratulations. I said, you have moved from atheism to agnostic. He goes, well, what's that? You're unsure. <laughs> that wasn't a hard heart. He listened. The hard heart is, don't you tell me. I've dealt with many Christians. I've dealt with many Baptists. I've dealt with many pastors. I had a hard pastor one time and a hard stone of pride and all that. Don't you tell me about the decoration. Don't you come back here. And they went and told everybody something else. You didn't have the nerve to tell. And when I talked to some of the people, they, well, that's not what I heard. Okay, yeah. At least they should hear the law. All right, we're under the law. We are... Christ has not died and suffered and buried or resurrected yet. Still under the law. The words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, by the former prophets, and one of them is Jeremiah, Isaiah, Elijah, Jonah. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. What's the great wrath? What you just asked about when we were in Babylon. <laughs> Why were you in Babylon? Because we didn't listen. What's the church age today? We're not listening. And I've dealt with these Baptists, never mind Catholics, never mind Presbyterians. I'm talking about the Baptists. I'm talking about street preacher. I'm talking about public evangelism. I'm talking about in their churches. Well, you know, this is what the Bible says. 
This is what paganism says about your holiday. Oh, I don't care. We're going we're gonna to still keep this holiday. But sir, it's paganism. It's roots are pagan. I don't want to hear it. We're going to do it. I got these videos. Listen to these videos. I give you all the, the page and names and chapters and the books written about it. And I give you all the scripture. I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that garbage. That's not listening, and that's a heart of stone. And that's in your Baptist church in 2022. And you got the Baptist today with the same Donald Trump and Democrat. I ain't going to hear it. He's not my Trump. Okay, well. You know, the Bible says you're to pray for the people in authority. I'll pray when Donald Trump's back in office. Oh, no, no. They stole our vote. Well, what happened to God being in control? Did you remember that God's in charge of all the earth? At least they should hear the law and the words of the Lord of hosts. He has sent by the spirit of the former prophets. So does the former prophets spoke by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. There it is, the Old Testament. Therefore came a great wrath of the Lord of hosts. Therefore it is come to pass. That as he cried, God, they would not hear. Thus saith the Lord, Romans, Galatians, Acts, Hebrews is written to Hebrews. James, written to the twelve tribes scattered aboard. Ah, we don't want to hear that. We're going to be taught what our pastor teaches and what the idiots that taught him. We don't want to hear what you have to say. We don't want to hear the scripture with the scripture. I had a pastor try and tell me his, his philosophy of a, of a doctrine with no scripture at all. I sat there and gave him what the scriptures say. It's precisely what, 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 the, what the topic we were talking about. Gave him the books, the chapter, and the verse. No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm telling you what it said. All right, by what authority? No authority. All right, get out of my house. So they cried. I would not hear. So they, so God cries out to them, but they wouldn't listen. Now they cry out to God, and God's like, I ain't listening. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. What's toward man so that you also shall also reap? Well, you're not gonna listen to me. I ain't gonna listen to you. And before warned that we are in the light of the scene church age right now, we make I say we make God sick. We're going through some trials. We're going through some problems. We're going through some tribulation. We're going through famine. We're going through drought. We're going through weather. We're going through war. We're going through no food. We're going through all kinds of things. And it's going to get to the point, God help us. I you want to listen to me. But God, uh, open your ECV and QR. God's like, I ain't in that book. I sent a prophet to your church with the King James Bible. You don't want to listen to him. You ignored him. You called it garbage. Okay. He's gone. I sent him. You want to listen to him? I ain't going to listen to you. So you in trouble. I've had some of them where... where they, they're in my prayer list, and God's like, no, 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 no. Don't you mention their name. And that's what God told Jeremiah. Say it the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind, that's a tornado, among the nations whom they knew not, Babylon, and other places. They went back into Egypt, and they died in Egypt. Thus the land was desolate after them, the land of Israel, that no man pressed through 
nor returned. It said 70 years. For they laid the pleasant land desolate. That was God's doing. There's coming a time that the church buildings, the church buildings, are going to be desolate. God's going to scatter his people home. I like to get so many people all upset. I mean, do you realize when the, when the rapture happens, the Antichrist is going to use your church building. Don't we have such a great building? Yeah, the Antichrist will enjoy it. What? What do you think? Your building is going to get raptured? Do you think we're going to have your church building on the street of gold in New Jerusalem? <laughs> really? Some of them believe that. Some even believe we're going to have a glorified America. Heaven. Oh, friend, you're wrong. 